You might find this morning the title a little interesting, a spiritual submerging or just a splash. We're going to be talking a little bit about baptism and what it means, and I'll share a few moments uh, why we're doing that on this particular Sunday. There are scriptures taken from Matthew chapter 3, verses 13 through 17, and you can follow along. You can insert in your bulletin with the outline, and if you even desire to fill in the blanks, you can do that this morning as well. But beginning at verse 13 of Matthew 3, Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said it should be done, for you must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens were open. And he saw the Spirit of God descend like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my dearly loved Son, who brings me great joy. Now next Sunday, we have several candidates that uh, are going to be baptized right here in our worship service. Some of you that are new to the church are wondering how it's all going to take place. Well, right behind me in the platform, part of the platform comes undone, and we have a baptistry that's built in to the floor of the platform. So it's all going to work out. And the nice thing about doing it inside the church, you know that I don't like the cold. So the water will be jacuzzi level. <laughs> some of you may not want to get out of the baptism. In fact, some of you might be signing up right now for next Sunday to be baptized. But the reason I'm sharing this message today is because as I share, maybe there's some of you sitting here who have received Jesus Christ as your Savior, but never gone that next step and have been baptized. And I'm praying this message might encourage you to do so. That maybe during the week you'll give me a call and say, hey, Pastor, since the baptistry is already going to be available, I would like to know more about how I can be baptized. But before we begin, I read a funny thing entitled Wisdom from the Mouth of Babes. Now, you may have perhaps heard this wisdom before, but here it goes. Patrick, age 10, never trust a dog to watch your food. Michael, age 14, never tell your mom her diet's not working. Husbands, never tell your wife that either. That's a little bit of advice from experience. <laughs> Hannah, age nine, when your dad is mad and asks you, do I look stupid? Don't answer. Lauren, age six, permanent markers are not good to use as lipstick. <laughs> and then Elaine, age eight, never try to baptize a cat. <laughs> Speaking of baptism, which really is our topic of the morning, a little girl sat with her parents on a Sunday in which they were doing a baptismal service. It was her very first experience witnessing this, and she was in shock. And she finally turned to her dad and said, What is happening, Dad? Why is our preacher pushing people under the water? What did they do? What's going on here? And I mean, she was actually scared over the entire experience. Before her dad could answer, her mom tried to whisper to her, try not to upset the rest of the worship service, and quietly explain, but she had none of it. So later that night, the parents also got together with her and thought, okay, let's walk her through this so she understands what's taking place. And they said, you know, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, you want Jesus to come into your heart so that you do good, that you follow after him. But when you do that, some people want to make it public. They want others to know that they're following Jesus Christ. That they want people to know that Jesus is washing them from their sins and renewing them. And so they come to the water. The water represents their old life. As they come back up, they're clean. And still the daughter wasn't getting it. She finally looked at her mom and dad and says, well, if he was so bad, why don't the pastor just spank him? <laughs> well, <laughs> might be a good question sometimes. <laughs> As I look around, who needs a spanking this morning? Well, in our scripture passage, it talks about Jesus being baptized by John. 
And you recognize that John actually struggled with this on several fronts. He struggled, first of all, because he knew who Jesus was. This is the Son of God. And on the other front, he knew who he was. He was a sinner. He was unworthy of what he was asked to do. And so in that, he battles. There's an internal war going on. But as this happens, several things come out of Scripture. The first that we discover through this particular reading is it reveals Christ's true identity. He is the very Son of God. Not only did the heavens open and the Spirit of God fall upon Jesus, the voice of God himself echoed out, This is my dearly loved Son, or some say my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. But there's another aspect, not just the ushering in of those particulars. There's another aspect that comes from the mouth of Jesus himself. He says, For we must carry out all that God requires. Now sometimes we just read over that, we can gloss over it, we may not pay a whole lot of attention to it, but did you know that throughout the New Testament we are commended to be baptized after we receive Jesus Christ, our personal Savior? In fact, with every salvation experience except a few, baptism always follows. It's symbolic, we know that. You don't need baptism to be saved. But it does express outwardly what God has already done within you inwardly. And so it plays a powerful spiritual role. For some of you here that have been baptized, my wife and I included who have been baptized, we know that during that experience, God does something in the heart. There is a spiritual connection, a spiritual role in the life of of the new believer. So it's more than just being wet. It's more than just being splashed. It has a tremendous spiritual moment that goes with it. But some of you may be here today wondering, you know, isn't that kind of archaic? Wasn't that kind of early church stuff? Why would I be baptized today? Why would it be important? Why in this day and age would I even choose to be baptized? Well, I have to say these are good questions. Because indeed in this day and age, being baptized is a pretty radical thing to do. Just like it was in the early church. Why is it radical? Because when you are baptized, you are publicly declaring your choice to follow Jesus Christ. You are publicly saying, I have received Jesus as my Savior, and I'm presenting myself before God and before you, <coughs> hoping to always be an example of the one who has transformed me. You know, when our country was founded, it was acceptable to be a Christian. In fact, let me go on to say this. It was culturally normal to be a Christian. Pretty run-of-the-mill, actually. Nowadays, in the society in which you and I live, in this pluralistic society, people are generally taught that all religions are of equal value. All religions are on the same ground. It's another way of saying that it really doesn't matter what you believe, they all lead to the same place. So when you are baptized, you are making an expression about your faith in Jesus, which makes you actually stand out. That's because Jesus wasn't pluralistic, as in the spirit of the age of today. Jesus actually said in his word, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father except through me. He also said that there is no other name under heaven. Here among men, whereby you can be saved. It's only through Jesus Christ and his death on the cross and his resurrection that you and I can discover forgiveness of sins and a transformed life. So a person who becomes a Christian and then chooses to be baptized is testifying several things. First of all, they're testifying they believe in who Jesus is. 
They're testifying that they also believe in what his word commands about baptism. And then the third thing they're saying is, you know what? I want Jesus to be on the throne of my life and not I. You know, before I accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior, I pretty much sat on that throne. I called the shots. I determined my path, unless my mom and dad changed it. But to the most part, I pretty much wanted to organize my own way, my own agenda. But when I accepted Jesus Christ, I made an intentional, conscious move off the throne and allowed Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, to allow Jesus Christ to be in that place as king of my life. And that is part of the symbolism of baptism. You see, when the baptismal candidate stands in the water, it's a symbol that there that person is in his or her own self, his or her life before Jesus Christ. Now, let me put it this way, it might help you understand, like this little girl trying to comprehend baptism. There are a host of peanut characters. You are familiar with peanut characters, right? Well, they introduced a new character to peanuts on July 13th, 1954, and that is Pigpen. There he is. How many remember Pigpen? Well, something about Pigpen, he always walked around in a cloud of dust, right? And of course, anything he touched, he sprinkled dirt on it. But you know, it didn't bother Pigpen. He was happily, as I would call, messy. He wasn't phased by it. He doesn't try to explain it. He doesn't try to hide it. He doesn't try to fight it. For him, it's just a fact of life. Well, when I look at Pigpen, and not to try to spiritualize anything, but you know, that's our lives without Jesus Christ. We're just comfortably messy. And we don't care who we spread dirt on because we're comfortably messy. We don't try to explain our mess. We don't try to do anything about our mess. We don't try to clean up our mess. And so when a candidate stands in that water, it's like they're saying symbolically, I used to be a pig pen. I used to be just like this. But as they're lowered into the water, that is symbolic of death, of dying to self. Dying out to their old way. They are under the water, mercifully for a moment, which represents being buried to the old self. And I say mercifully because I want you guys to know, if you want to be baptized, I will bring you back up. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, you know, I will bring you back up. I'm scared right away from this particular sacrament. But you go down, you're burying yourself, your old self is being buried, and you're coming back up as a new creation or representing again that new creation. As the scripture says, we were therefore buried with him through baptism unto death. You know, the story is told that when the gospel was first preached on the island of Barbados, the islanders didn't totally understand all of it. But they did know who Jesus was and what Jesus could do. So many accepted Jesus as their personal Savior. And then they were taught about baptism. So several wanted to be baptized on that very first baptismal service as they were there by the ocean. And these candidates came out. All the women were dressed in their nightgowns and the men in their pajamas. And the missionaries were confounded. Like, what in the world is happening? And so they try to convince them to go change into other clothing. But they refused. And the missionaries decide, okay, you know, we're not going to cause a scene right now. Let's go ahead and baptize them just as they are. But next time, we need to give better instructions on what baptism is and how to dress. But before the next time ever came, there was a death on the island, and the missionaries went to support the family, to be there. And what they discovered is at that death, the one in the coffin, a gentleman, was dressed in his pajamas. And now the missionaries are shocked. They begin to ask why. And here's how 
Bible is explained. We believe when a person dies, he goes to sleep. So we bury them in their sleepwear. Now it made sense to the missionaries. These that were coming to be baptized were saying we're going to die to ourselves. <laughs> so we need to be in our sleepwear. We need to be prepared to die to self, to let the self be buried under the water. So next week, some of you can come in your pajamas. <laughs> but you know, unfortunately, that's really not how it ends. And that's the beauty of it all. Because the picture of baptism ends with you being brought back out of the water, symbolizing a resurrected life, symbolizing new life. Each life or person that is baptized is raised out of the water, showing that Christ indeed is the one that brings transformation. A new life, a better life, a life committed to God's love, to God's purposes, to God's ways. United with Jesus Christ in his death, each Christian receives the promise of being united with Jesus Christ in his resurrection. <coughs> Ephesians 2, 1 says, we were dead in our transgressions and sins. Is it good to know that we become alive? Renewed, made new. To be spiritually alive actually means to be open, truly open to receive all that God intends for your life. To be open to be used of God, to be a person that God can put out into this society to love others and to speak the message of Christ into others. To be open is to be a person of light and not a person of darkness. To having the direction of your life radically altered, radically made new. And one last thing I want to share before our praise team comes back to the platform, and that is this. God, my friends, is not a theory. God is not a set of principles. God is God, the creator of your life and the creator of the universe. And know what that tells me? Because he is who he is and desires a relationship with you and I, that every one of us in this room have the privilege of drawing as close to God as you choose to. But the choice still rests upon your shoulders. It's still in your ballpark. God is there drawing you, waiting for you to come, to fulfill all the requirements, as Jesus said to John, back in the beginning of our text. You know, we baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm going to ask the praise team to come to the platform right now. That is what we call the Trinity, or the three in one. It is perfect love, perfect community, perfect intimacy, perfectly being known, and perfectly known. As you are baptized, you follow Jesus who is also baptized. As you're baptized, you mirror Christ's own experience of death and resurrection. As you're baptized, you demonstrate that you have chosen to yield yourselves to God through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. So as I mentioned, next Sunday we're going to witness the experience of baptism. There are several that are going to go through this sacred moment. But maybe as I was sharing, the Lord was speaking to your heart, and you're a Christian, and you haven't yet gone to this next step of being baptized. You can talk to me right after the service today, or you can call me on the phone this week. It would be great to have 10, 15 people being baptized next week. Sure make it worthy to fill out the baptistry, right? There never will be more, because I don't like cold. So think about it and pray it through, ask God what your next step in your spiritual journey needs to be. Let's stand together as we close in song.